Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to this doodly tutorial. Today I'm going to be using a custom background and I'm going to be using some custom draw paths and using the settings to offset the timing of the way the paths are revealed. This is going to give me a staggered reveal that's going to be used in another asset for another video. But as you can see it's going to be a revealing of the map and a path along it. So with that let's get into it. So to start off with, we're starting with a brand new project. So I'm just going to start with the standard doodly beginning and just go create new video. Um, what I'm going to want to do with this is create a new custom video, custom uh, backplate, because um, I want to be able to have the image there all the time, and I don't want to interact with it. I don't want it drawn on. I just want it there to start off with. So I'm going to start with a custom plate, and I change from color to image. Um, and I'm then going to browse my files and open up the image. It'll bring up the image that I want um, and I'll just expand it to full size because I've made this image with the idea that it is full size. There we go. So it's the correct ratio that I want and it's lined up the way that I want it as well. So I'm just going to use that and go done and that will upload. Oh, I need to give it a title. Okay. So the title I'm going to give this is something that's relatable to the project. Oh, I've got caps lock on. That's no good. BK3 map. And there's a reason I actually like giving all the projects I work on a custom name. Um, which I shall show you in just a second because um, custom naming these things makes it easier for being able to organize your projects or being able to organize your assets so knowing which particular asset you create goes with which project if you give it a good name or if your naming convention is really cool and really clean you can then actually filter down any of the uh, props that you want so once I've got, the first thing I'm going to do now that I've got my backplate, I'm going to bring in all the assets uh, which are related to this. So I'm going to go to props and I'm just going to add all the props which I've got or which I need to bring in. So and I'm just going to drag and drop them and I'm going to continue with the same naming convention. Um, so I'm just going to bring all them in. Excellent. So I've got all my uh, all my images in which I'm required to gonna require to build out this track reveal. And Doodly has brought them all in nicely and giving me an order in the, the way that I've brought them in, which is great. Um, so someone someone asked this the other day about being able to find assets once you've created them. Um, one of the reasons I like naming mine as I bring them in now is because under categories you can filter down your um, your particular assets like so I'll go to my library and then to find anything that's related to this project I just search for it because I know what I would have brought it in as and there's my asset list which I've got that goes along with this one so it's the same with any of the um, categories you've got in here for props you can come into animals and then you can search for bear and it'll show all the bears which are related to it or maybe a better one might be cat. Brings in all the cat images which are related to the image, to the to the cats. So um, I'm gonna stick to my library and I don't have any cats at all in there. This particular project is BK3. So that's all the assets I need for that. Right now, since I've got all the assets that I need on my stage, I'm actually gonna close this down so I can work uh, with a bit more uh, real estate on my screen. So, things that I, uh, settings that I like to start off with, like setting up the project, it's like which hand do you want to use? You know, this is quite an interesting sort of one. I might use a longer hand and end up using that hand. I don't always like seeing the jumper. I've used, uh, you know, we've got quite a few different ones to work with. So I only use that hand and he's right handed. Um, and
and the erase mode is unavailable for that one. Excellent. So hopefully that means normally with the erase mode, let's just choose a different one, smart mode, I usually turn it off anyway. So I'm hoping with this one, smart mode, erase mode is unavailable, which is great because for the reveal, which I'm doing, I don't want the eraser or the finger or anything to actually scrub anything out. I want it to just continue on. So I'm gonna apply that setting and hopefully this is all gonna, that's gonna be exactly what I want to start off with. All right, so what I want for this, uh, for this reveal, the reason I've gone and broke these up into all little different pieces is I want to have control with the way this revealed is revealed to be able to go from one step and then pause, and then another to the next destination, and then pause. Um, if I did it all as a single image, it means that the reveal would have to just go all the way through and I wouldn't be able to get my pauses in the movie to be able to then edit later because I want to take, I want to take um, my, my picture which I'm, or my movie which I'm creating and I want to put it into a uh, editing software afterwards so I can then chop it and splice it and, and put with the audio because uh, it will be easier to edit with the audio outside of Doodly than it is trying to line it up uh, with the audio, which I haven't had actually recorded yet because I'm still going to sit down with the recording artist, but I want to get this laid out so I can do it in an editing software afterwards. So to start off with my settings, which I want, I'm going to start off working on start, which is right down the bottom here. So if I can grab it underneath that, bring it out. Here we go. That one. I'm actually gonna give it a delay to start. So before it even starts playing, I want a bit of space of just the blank, the, the blank map. So I'm gonna give it a two second delay. Um, I'm gonna to wanna to place it in its position. So I'm gonna turn the opacity down. And now you can see that the map itself or the image itself has gone semi-transparent when you're not on it. So as I hover over it, it still goes fully transparent. But when I'm off it, it's a lot clearer. So I can let it there and just shove the image a little bit so that the start arrow points directly to our starting location. And then I'm gonna put it back into 100% opacity. I'm also going to want with this with this one it does it works all right but the draw pattern when we actually look at it when it's drawn it just scribbles over top of it which for this first image will work fine so I don't need to do a custom draw path for it um, the only thing I am going to do is make it go quicker because three seconds to reveal that is just way too long it's going to be way too boring for everyone so I'm just going to scroll it right down to 0.5 of a second excellent now onto the second one um, and for this one, again, because I want to be able to edit this later, I'm going to give myself a two second pause bef a delay before this draw comes in. And then I'm going to drag it down to where it needs to be. So it's that one there. Grab that, drag it down. And we can see that this one's, I've left that little black arrow there to line up. So I'm going to turn down the opacity on this one. So I can line up that circle, just perfect. You can even go down in even further. I need to put this one on top of it to be able to get the opacity to go down on it. So, now you can see that there's a little bit of an annoying bug here that you can see that the scroller scrolls as well as the image when it moves. It only does that when I'm actually zoomed in on it. If I'm zoomed out, the image itself then doesn't move and my draw path does. But it's just not as easy to see where we're going. All right, so I'll put that into position where it is and then turn up its opacity again. And this one, I know this one's draw path probably is not gonna reveal the way I want it to reveal. So let's have a look at that. It's currently two seconds and three. So grab this and let's have a look at the draw path. So it starts from the top and draws its way down, which is not what I want because I want to start from the bottom and draw its way up. So I'm just going to do that with a draw path. So 
click on plus. I'm going to plus some points in here. Let's zoom in on it a bit better so we can see it. So because the circle is already drawn, I don't have to redraw that. I'm just going to put in a few points along here. So it does draw out this circle. You can see I've actually used quite a lot of points in there, mainly because I do want the pencil to sort of follow it and I don't want it to just to go as a straight line. The more points you put in there, the more it's got a chance to follow the line and look a bit better. But you can also see that it's not, not thick enough. It doesn't kind of reveal that path. So I'm just gonna make it bigger so it reveals everything. There we go. So now that red line now covers all of my line. Beautiful, save and return. And the same with my start one. Three seconds is way too long. So I'm gonna put that right down to 0.5. Beautiful. All right. Now the next one after that, I'm gonna do the same thing again. I'm actually just gonna go through and set these up exactly the same. I'm gonna do one after the other. It's a simple process of adjusting the delay because I want that delay point, um, adjusting the duration so that the duration comes through. Um, so it draws really quickly and you're not hanging there waiting for it to just tra track up a line. Um, and then moving on to the next one and just turning the opacity up and down just so I can line things up exactly the way I want it. So I'm just gonna run through that with the rest of them. So there we go, now we've got all of our paths lined out. So let's have a look at how they reveal when we do a preview. Excellent, all right, so there was a few issues. Um, mainly these two are around the wrong way. So let's put that back that way. There we go. And my finish line is not actually lining up exactly where it needs to be. So somewhere for me, the scale of these is a little off um, because that's not its final destination. But I can deal with that just with um, uh, uh, scaling these images a little bit just to get it so it shuffles up and works properly. The start point's definitely the right point. Which is very interesting. It's one of those interesting things I find with Doodly is even though I'm using the same image for the foreground and the background and actually splitting up all these pieces was all from the same image, somehow when you import them in, they don't keep their relative scale. But uh, it's that's a minor thing you get to deal with. Uh, the other thing which I want to do with these is actually use uh, the naming tool, the text tool, to slide in here and write out you know what the names of these places are. So I'm going to use that with just the text. So I'm gonna start off, I actually wanna use just a Corian New. And let's start off with Melbourne. And this one is my start point right down the bottom here. And I'm gonna want that to come in just after I reveal the start. So at the moment it would go all the way down the bottom. There we go, let's drag that up. Nope, not above it, below that one. There we go, Melbourne. So there we go. And you can see this time I'm not actually gonna use a delay on this one so it can start straight after it's drawn on, it can write Melbourne. 
So that's fabulous. All right, so I'm just gonna go through and do exactly the same thing again with these. I'm just gonna label all these spots that comes up. You know, double click, brings up, uh, when you double click, brings up the text bar. So you can then write in what uh, whatever you want in here. And I can resize it just by dragging the scale. There we go. With them all now named, um, I just have to make sure that I've got my scene setting at the end to have a two seconds like I've given it everywhere else. Brilliant, apply that. Now when we preview that, as you can see, you know, I've given it quite uh, heaps of time in between each one so that I can chop where I want in the edit. I can kind of hold a frame so that it works through, but it's doing everything it needs to do. It's got, um, the only thing I'm really not too happy with is the width or the size of the text which is written. That's, for me, it's not quite the right font. Um, I think the font's uh, a little bit thin for the image. I'd like it to be a little bit fatter or even just put bold on it. But apart from that, there you go. That took all of, 20 minutes to put that one together and now I've got a nice little map reveal which I can put inside uh, another explainer video to help me actually tell the story of this trip which I'm taking. Excellent. All that's left to do then is to hit the export button. Hooray! So that's it. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you found this tutorial useful, please leave a like, share, subscribe or comment. Um, this is all going towards our part of raising funds for the Cancer Council of Australia. There's a link down in the description below if, you, if you're keen that, or if this, has been a, if this has been useful in any way, follow the link in the description below to a, a fundraising page for the Cancer Council of Australia. Thank you all very much and look forward to seeing you all again real soon.